Hey guys, still here and welcome back to War on the Sea. Welcome to the Operation Watchtower again. Um, I've played the game quite a bit since I did the first episode and well, I would really like to love this game but it has some glaring issues at the moment. So this is going to be a bit of a uh, let's hope that they change this thing. For starters, I have loaded up my campaign and my task forces have all miraculously forgotten what they were doing. They just don't have any orders. So I have task force 2 here for example. Uh, they just kind of forgot what they were up to. Where exactly or what they were doing. Um, I even find it hard to remember. I think I sent them over to Rattle Island but I expect that if I save a campaign, it also actually saves the orders that those ships had. Uh, not so much. <laughs> they just don't. So that needs to get fixed. Um, yesterday's issue that I was having in the fight was that I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to launch carrier fighters or carrier planes in general during a battle. That's because in the current iteration of the game, you just can't. You just cannot launch any aircraft from an aircraft carrier, or an airfield for that matter, when you're in a battle, period. If you want your aircraft to be involved, you have to do that before the battle starts. So let's say that Task Force 1 over here encounters, well, anything else. If you then want to use aircraft, and maybe it's going to happen during this episode, we'll see. If your aircraft carrier encounters something, you can launch one flight of aircraft just before the battle and they will take part. But since you generally don't know what it is that you encounter, you don't really know what aircraft to launch. So um, it's a gamble. Do you launch fighters? Do you launch dive bombers, torpedo bombers? I don't know what I'm fighting, so I don't really know what the correct answer is to the threat. Um, something else that I've found, scouting is tedious. It needs to be made a lot easier. Right now I have the Wildcat group over here from the Enterprise and the Wildcat group is one that I want to use for scouting. So I'm gonna set them up as a sort of advanced scouting force. But the thing is, at some point when they reach the last waypoint they just kind of loiter and when their endurance reaches zero they just fall out of the sky. So you really have to keep an eye on your scouts, which apparently don't have the brain power to just fly back to the carrier or the airfield that they came from, when they figure out that, hey, uh, we're almost bingo fuel, we gotta get back. They don't do that. The unit AI in a battle takes just about as much initiative as a brick. It just doesn't do anything. They're just sitting there and there can be an aircraft flying over, a hostile scouting aircraft, they just don't shoot at all, unless you tell them to. Stuff like that really needs to get changed. Now, when I loaded up the campaign to start recording on this video, what I was expecting um, was that the audio levels would be the same as when I left the game. Uh, no, the audio levels were back at full blast, so that's something that I had to change. and. This is something else that I didn't like. You cannot access the main menu from the campaign or from the battle. So right now, um, I would expect to be able to click uh, or press escape. I'm pressing it now, nothing happens, nothing comes up. So if you want to leave to change your settings, and that could be graphics settings, audio, whatever, you have to quit out of the campaign. You have to load up, or you have to go back to the main menu, change your settings, and then load whatever you were doing. I'm sorry, it's 2021. Stuff like this really should be different. Um, I will continue with this playthrough and I might, um, I might, well, be a bit more critical of the game because it's, uh, it has quite a few things that I just don't really, well, at least like, uh, much less understand. Now what I'm going to do is um, split the Farragut and the Enterprise off of Task Force 1. And I'm going to have the Enterprise and Farragut slightly farther behind the rest of the conflict. So that I don't risk my aircraft carrier getting into battle. The plan right now is to continue with my approach for Rennell Island. Capture that and turn that into a bit of a base. 
So I'll have some freighters running back and forth and uh, see if I can turn this into a functional port. So Task Force 2, which is currently carrying the troops and uh, supplies, you guys are going to continue over to here, but uh, not yet. Because as I have figured, the AI is uh, really quite dangerous when it comes to using submarines. So what I'm going to do is order up a new submarine, oh sorry, a new um, destroyer, and ensure that that one is capable of escorting my two uh, transports over there. So I'm going to buy a Fletcher, the actual Fletcher itself, done. I'm going to tell the Fletcher to cruise towards the transports where it will arrive in two hours and then I can merge those groups together. In the meanwhile, the next air and sea group is the Enterprise and uh, the Task Force 4. Let's say that this is the uh, NC Battle Group. And North Carolina Battle Group is going to cruise towards here. Hopefully they won't encounter any submarines. If so, I only really have the Dewey to engage those. So I don't really have too many counter submarine options. I also want to launch another submarine myself, because they turn out to be really cheap and pretty damn potent. Uh, we got the Tambor class, and the one that I actually like a little better is the Gato class. They're both five points, I think. No, the Tambor's four points. So I'm gonna buy uh, a Gato class, done. Of course, we're gonna just see if we can intercept some uh, transports right about there check. Next, I want to do that again. So we're going to buy yet another submarine, and it cannot be the Gato because it's commissioned. That's what the C stands for. We're going to buy the Greenling. Done. Course here. Now, aside from the issues that I just mentioned, and a bit of a clunky UI, I have hope for this game, but they really, really need to change some of the stuff. Here. Okay, never mind. The aircraft do go back to the aircraft carrier. Thank God. That would have been pretty painful just to start losing aircraft that way. Oh, I cannot launch aircraft during night times. So that makes sense. We have an encounter with Task Force 4. That is the Task Force of the Enterprise. So here we go. Um, there is an encounter. I don't know what I'm facing. I don't know what the threat is. Um, and this is the last moment when you can actually launch aircraft. I have my suspicions, since I'm not seeing a scout aircraft, nor a surface ship icon, that it's going to be a submarine. Unfortunately, right now, I cannot launch aircraft anyway, so it's going to be the Farragut that defends the Enterprise. Let's begin the, the encounter. Search for and engage any enemy forces in the area. During the battle phase, there's something else that's quite annoying. Um, there is no way to quit out of the battle. So I would always want to be able to quit out of a battle. Maybe you suddenly have to, I don't know, go to work, for example. Or in my case, I have to go and tend to my kid. You just can't. You cannot leave the battle. All you can do is retreat. But if I want to retreat now, it says, no, you cannot do that before the start of the combat. Okay, makes sense. But during the start of the combat, I have to wait four in-game minutes without any encounter to actually get my ass out of the conflict. That's something that I really dislike. I would say, okay, if you want to terminate the conflict early, um, either consider the entire battle group lost or consider that it takes severe damage. That would be, as far as I'm concerned, an acceptable price to pay to make sure you can quit out of the battle early, but the game doesn't have that. Anyway, we're going to start. And this is, hmm, call it a trick or an exploit if you will, but we're gonna to switch to subsurface mode immediately. And sometimes you can immediately hear submarines launch torpedoes. So let's check. Nothing yet. Enterprise? That's the radar, so that probably won't spot anything. Sometimes, when there's a submarine in the area and they immediately start torpedoing you, because they do, you don't get any kind of a warning, which, of course, works with the submarine, but you hear this shoof, and you hear that six times, and then you know there's torpedoes on the way. For now, I don't know, if, know what I'm fighting. 
I'm not sure if it's a surface ship, um, if it's a submarine, if it's an aircraft. I have no idea. I'm assuming it's a sub. But good luck finding that. Especially considering that there's a layer at 245 feet. So a submarine could be hiding beneath the layer and I would never find it. Now I do have depth charges. I carry 60 of those. And I hope that I'm going to be able to find the enemy submarine and sink it. Aside from the issues that I mentioned, I really hope that Ultimate Admiral Dreadmoss is going to have a campaign that is something like this. Where you use command points to spend on ships that you want to buy. Uh, you use fuel, you maybe establish a new base. It's a bit like the system that we have here. But of course, with the notable exception that you're going to be... Um, well, you're going to be designing your own ships, as opposed to having a set set of ships. Now, I'm going to be changing course here. Fuck me, see? Enterprise struck by a torpedo. I have no clue where that came from. Apparently, from the front. Right? I get that submarines are really dangerous predators. And that they can easily overwhelm a surface ship. Like they're doing here. And the damage to the Enterprise is considerate. There's moderate damage, there's moderate flooding. And uh, considering that I'm... Well, that I have air operations going. Because I have a few aircraft in the skies. They're just not part of this battle. Well, I'm vulnerable. I'm very, very vulnerable. Especially to fires, I believe. Anyway, especially... Or apparently there is an enemy submarine out here. Um, but Farragut hasn't been able to find it yet. Considering where the torpedoes came from, that submarine has to be somewhere around here. So I'm going to slow down a bit to 10 knots and see if I can find the bugger. Because he has to be here somewhere. Can't use time compression either because apparently we're almost on top of the sub. Stuff like this. Oof. Now, what are the sensors on my ship? What's my passive sonar like? 14 nautical miles. Okay. On ship speed, 9 knots. I really hope Enterprise is going to survive this encounter. Fortunately, it takes submarines forever to reload their torpedo tubes, if they can at all. Provided that they have enough ammunition, that is. I really hope that Enterprise is going to survive this encounter. I quite need it. Now, what I didn't show you in the previous episode was that over here we have um, the damage control screen. It allows you to micromanage what you want repaired first. These are engineering departments, uh, magazines here and here. Bingo, we got them. Um, we have the rudders, propellers, and over here on the top side of the ship we have the aircraft. Secondary guns, bridge, fire directors, another aircraft section, funnel, another aircraft section, and some more secondary guns. And right now, port side of the ship is flooded, and considering these compartments are black, their integrity is none, they will stay flooded. This part of the ship cannot be emptied. So it looks like the Enterprise is going to have to head back to base for repairs. Now, something that um, I noticed, and maybe the history uh, experts among you as well. It says 5 here on the deck. Um, Enterprise is CV6, not CV5. Anyway, time to take control of Farragut and hunt down the asshole that has been able to torpedo the Enterprise. We know that it is a submarine. Uh, depth, 32 feet. So they're pretty much at periscope depth. But they are going down, apparently. Their depth is increasing. So I need to race over there and see if I can drop off my... Um, s not my sonar boys. <laughs> my depth charges. To see if I can get the guy. New contact. Mm -hmm. One. Submarine. Submarine lost. Crap. That siren that you can hear? That's the submarine. Submarine. 
Now, I'm not sure if I picked it up on active sonar or passive sonar, but I'm going to slow down and see if I can re-establish the contact. And the Farragut's the only thing that I can use. Enterprise has dive bombers, but they cannot be used. Ah, there you are. They cannot be used because we're already in the battle. Now, I suspected that it was a submarine, and if it wasn't too dark, I would have immediately launched dive bombers with depth charges. Not that they would have been able to save me, of course, but it would at least have been a bit of a solution. Maybe a, a unit that could have helped, because the Farragut now spots the submarine. Now I just need something to kill it. And dive bombers with depth charges could have been a real help. Now, we're not getting a lot of information about the sub. We know that it's diving. It's currently 106 feet down, 108, 110. Uh, it's not fast. It's only doing 7 knots. And I'm heading over there at best speed, 20 knots. Turn to port. There she is. Right there. So we're going to try and engage that submarine. It is quite tricky in this game, i found, to tackle submarines, because the way that I'm currently spotting it is with active sonar, I think. The game doesn't really tell me what sensors have been used to actually detect the threat. In order to drop depth charges, I'm going to have to bypass the sub. So I'm going to have to sail past it, that means over it. Then drop my depth charges and hope that they hit something. And that's... Um, it's a bit of a gamble. Because the moment that I sail over it, I'm going to lose my firing solution. Over here, SOL, solution, is currently around 80%, 90. But it's going to start dropping pretty soon. There, lost contact. Alright, drop depth charges. There we go. Now the game still gives me something of an idea of where the sub is based on what it was doing. It's right there. You might just about be able to make it out. There she is. Uh, that was fairly close, I think. Let's drop some more. I only have 60. Um, I have to be careful not to drop all of my depth charges and miss with all of them. Because if I manage to miss with all of them, I have no other weapon systems to use against this sub. And all I can do is hope to disengage. Now what I'm trying to do is force this thing to the surface so that I can engage it with the guns. I have already done this off-screen once. And um, what I found interesting was that the submarine was forced to surface during that encounter. And when it did, it immediately opened up with the gun. Whereas the guns on my destroyer weren't even pointing in the general direction of the sub yet. Now let's drop some more depth charges. I know that my positioning isn't ideal here. But I'm going to have to do a full turn if I want to get back to spotting it. The solution is still about 80%. We know where the enemy sub is. Their depth is going down. To minus 320. Uh, do we? Yeah, it's a type B2. Okay, let's see what they can do. Recognition. A type B2 submarine. Here. Um, test depth, crush depth. What are their stats? Test depth, 328 feet. These things can go really deep. And that's their test depth, which means that their actual crush depth is about 1.25 to 1.5 times that. But considering that it seems to be going up, we might have damaged it. Maybe sufficiently so that it's going to surface. When it does that, I want to have my guns pointing over to starboard. Uh, we're going to fire high explosive at it. We're going to target this way and we're going to hold fire. Oh, sorry, I need to switch to manual. Come on. Depth, 73 feet. Steady. 
53 feet. They're definitely surfacing. This thing is coming up way too fast. At which point, we can just gun it down. There she is. Engage. Now watch this. The back gun is up. No, this time around it's not actually engaging. Yet. Hello, buddy. My turn to do some damage. I just have to try not to ram into the Enterprise. Um, unlike Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, if you ram a friendly ship in this game, it does give you some grief. You will take a lot of damage from that. So, I've already had to send a... There we go, she's sinking. But that means dead, not just submerging. Um, I've had a couple of ships run into each other as they were trying to line up their formation. And when they did that, I had to send all of them back to base <laughs> just to get repaired. Oh well. Anyway, job done here. Um, that is, if that is the only surface contact or subsurface contact, I don't know. The game doesn't tell me when we're done. So, in this case, I could be spending, well, as long as I would like in this encounter. Uh, I'm going to retreat and leave, and considering that I can do that immediately, there's nothing left. Moderate damage to the Enterprise. The B2 has been sunk and I gained two command points. So now I can send this group back to base just to get them fixed up. That means that the uh, North Carolina Battle Group is going to lose their escort. They won't have any kind of support anymore. These guys are capable of getting merged, I think. Oh, you have to be really close, gotcha. There we go. All right, I want you guys to swap position. So the Fletcher's gonna be leading it. Not that this is any kind of a guarantee that I'll be able to live long enough to bring these transports to safety once I get engaged by a submarine. Because the submarines in this game give you absolutely no warning. None whatsoever. Now Task Force 4 has come back to base and I can now release the Enterprise from command, which means that it's only the Farragut and the Farragut's fine. I can just rearm the Farragut. All ships rearmed. That means that she has her full complement of depth, uh, depth charges back. The Enterprise is going to be repairing for the next nine days after having taken one, maybe two torpedoes. So let's continue on. This base here is neutral, by the way. Rennell Island, and so is the Santa Cruz Islands. Aircraft spotted near Greenling. That's near my submarine. That's unfortunate, but not terrible. I can just ignore that. Because that submarine shouldn't really be in trouble. Now, we got detected... Damn it, there she is again. Ignore. We're getting detected from somewhere over here, and I think that these spotting aircraft constantly get launched by a submarine. So we're gonna send, well, are we gonna send this group? Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna send this group here. And I'm just gonna build a small hunter group, new C. Uh, let's go with two Mayhan class destroyers. The Mayhan and the Cummings. 12 points. Done. Set a course for here, because I think there is a submarine lurking about there. 88 command points. Let's see what else we can buy. Because for 88 command points, I might be able to get some more units. Um, what would I like? I currently know of more submarines. Or at least I know that there is another submarine around here. I'm going to build another hunter group. These Mayhans are six points. The Gridleys are six points. The most important thing here is that they're good against submarines. Weapons. Uh, depth charges, yes. Sonar, active sonar, one nautical mile. Passive sonar, 14. I think they all have one nautical mile active sonar. The Brooklyn, not, of course, because it's not a destroyer. Benham. Let's send out a, a few Fletchers. Radford and Jenkins. Done. Task Force 7. 
this is going to be ASW group 2. I'm going to send these guys to start hunting down that submarine as well. Uh, this is the lonely Farragut. Oh, the Greenling. Ignore. It's once again that patrol aircraft. Oh, there's two of them now. Lovely. There's definitely something out there. Uh, task Force 6 is ASW1. And then we have Task Force 4 holding. The Enterprise is going to still need a lot of time. Eight more days. 68 command points left. What else can I get? Because I might be able to harass them some more with some submarines. I have two of them going out. But maybe I can send some more out. Uh, let's get another couple of gatos out. Growler. Done. Of course. Here. Jack. Next. New C. Uh, yes, another gato class. The grouper. Done. Of course. Uh, let's say here, so that if they send something out there, we're going to know about it. That's 58 points. What else can I get? Can I get another battleship, maybe? Okay, I think an aircraft carrier is going to be a bit too expensive. Or maybe a cruiser group. Like two or three cruisers. Oh, these things aren't available yet, the Baltimores. Um... Cruiser armament, six inch guns. It's good against destroyers, not great against cruisers. What about the Clevelands? The Clevelands also had six. Yeah, six inch guns. Northampton, eight inch guns. There we go. Uh, no submarine capabilities or counter submarine capabilities. So yes, I'll bring one of these on. The Northampton itself. And you're going to get escorted by two Farragut-class destroyers. The Farragut and the McDonough. And maybe an Atlanta as well. The Atlanta herself. 52 points. That leaves me with six more. This is Task Force 10. And Task Force 10 is going to head over here. Off you go. All right, um, with these ships all deployed, I'm going to leave you guys here and I'll be back soon with another episode just to see what else we are capable of finding here because these submarines here need to go. Hope you guys are enjoying the game. Um, again, a lot needs to get updated, changed or patched and I hope that killer fish is up to that because I've been reading some reviews that say that they might not do that as their after game or after release support supposedly isn't that good? Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you see hope to see you soon in the next episode.